All right, so after five minutes of messing around with the lighting down here to try and make sure there's no like shadows or weird light beams like you can kind of see right here going right through my face, today's video is going to be on workout volume and we're going to get into this a little bit. We're going to do kind of a brief analysis here. Um, before I get into this video, I do want to say that muscle growth is basically created through multiple different paths and it's not just volume or it's not just progression or the pump. There's a bunch of different ways. We're not entirely sure scientifically what's like the main driver of muscle growth and what isn't. We've had certain times where we think it's volume. We have certain times where we think it's progressive overload, getting stronger and whatnot. Over time, we have learned that there are multiple different ways to grow muscle. And we don't necessarily know which ways are great, which ways are good, which ways are okay, which ways are bad. So it's best to go based on what we do know builds muscle and probably still include a couple other methods in the program. Obviously, this is very complex. So today, we're just going to focus on volume. One thing we do know is whether volume is the main driver of hypertrophy or not, it's still extremely important. And it's actually necessary to build muscle, especially optimally. And we'll get into that a little bit here. So volume is interpreted in many different ways. The best way to use it is to reference your total sets generally your total sets throughout the week obviously there's a few different ways to set that up whether you're doing a bro split like a very low frequency work the muscle once and get all your total sets in in that one day or you can do like a full body five times a week get a couple sets in every day that slowly accumulate over time i would have to recommend the answer is probably somewhere in the middle i think bro splits maybe a little bit too low on the frequency and full body is definitely a little bit too high on the frequency Either way, we're going to talk about volume. We're not going to get too much into splits today. So side tangent is over. We need to be thoughtful when choosing how much volume we program. So there is a certain threshold that we need to hit when it comes to volume. And there is such thing as too much. And there is such thing as too little. Not to say that too much volume won't get you any results or too little won't get you any results. But you're going to be far from optimal. And it's very easy to calculate your volume. You just have to self-experiment once you understand how volume works and what the general range is that you're looking for. The first step in assessing where you're currently at and if it's working or not. So wait, did I read that wrong? I did. So the first step is assessing where you're currently at and if it's working or not. So the first step that you're going to need to do take your current program or take your current split, even if you're not on something that's like a legit program where you track everything, you still have a pretty good idea of what you're doing week to week. Add everything up. How many sets are you doing for each muscle group? What's your workout on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, etc.? Add this up, write it all down for each muscle group. I would generally advise against counting compound movements for your biceps and triceps. Like I wouldn't count bench press or rows for your biceps or triceps. That story I've already talked about in other videos about, um, I can never remember what exact titles I use, but it's my uh, the biggest problem with arm training or the biggest misconception in arm training. I just posted it like last week. Check that one out. I'll discuss a lot of that there. But what you need to do is basically figure out how many sets you're doing for each muscle group per week. From there, you need to assess where you've made progress. If you haven't been tracking your progress at all, it's not the end of the world to do the eyeball test and just see if you can kind of notice what feels like it's grown or whatnot. I do advise against the eyeball test. I do advise for using multiple different ways of measuring your progression, such as before and after pictures, weight on the scale, strength on your lifts, and actual muscle measurements with a tape measure. Not everybody does that consistently. If you have an idea of what your strong muscle groups are and what your lagging muscle groups are, you can assess from there. Each muscle is going to require for different people, it's going to require different amounts of volume. And even muscle to muscle on your own body, they can require different amounts of volume. Like maybe your triceps need 18 sets a week to grow and your quads only need 10 sets a week to grow. You just don't really know until you experiment with this stuff. So once you're at, once you're at um, a point where you know how much you're training and how much volume you're doing, you need to assess it. Are you getting results? If yes, what can you assume led to those results? If not, there are two main ways volume can be used incorrectly, too much or too little, like I talked about earlier. So to break down, I'm going to go into 
too much and I'm going to go into too little and the cons of each of these and how they're going to be holding you back from optimal results. Too much volume. The problem here is you'll be half-assing your sets and generally not training hard enough for optimal results. This is a complete waste of time. A lot of people just say, and when I say people, I'm referring to like a lot of a lot of influencers, they'll kind of say, oh, maybe you're just doing too much. It's like, okay, well, explain why. Nobody tells you why, so that's what I'm going to do here. The reason why adding overkill volume doesn't work is because you already have a set amount of training that you need to get results optimally. If you overshoot that, you're forced to disperse your effort throughout more volume than you can actually handle. If 10 sets per week is optimal for your quads to grow, then when you do 10 sets, you can apply 100% effort to those 10 sets. We all know intensity is also another main driver of hypertrophy. If you aren't getting results at 10 sets and you think the solution is just to add volume and you go up to 20 sets per week, now you are doing more volume, but you're only applying 50% effort to each set. And obviously those numbers are just an example. There's no way to actually measure percentages of efforts on set aside from like RPE or RIR. But basically you need to have, there's only so much effort that you have. It's like finding that happy medium where you can um, crush the amount of work you have without cutting yourself short and doing too little or trying to do more than you possibly can. Like we've all seen, we've all probably seen those studies where like the people that work 10 hours are only productive for three hours. So it's like, was that 10 hour shift necessary if they're only productive for three? But then again, if they're only there for three, do they really have enough to get done? The answer is generally going to be somewhere in the middle, maybe a six, seven or eight hour shift. They could do all of it and work pretty hard and get a really good work day in. That's very productive. The same thing applies to your training. So let's say you do try to apply max effort to every set and you are doing too much volume. Now you risk entering junk volume or baggage volume territory. And those are two terms, obviously. We've probably all heard junk volume. Obviously, nobody's heard baggage volume since I came up with that term myself and I haven't discussed it with anybody yet. So let's break it down. Some people do have a different definition for junk volume than I do. I think junk volume is too... I think there's too much nuance in it just to have one term for basically overkill volume. So I'm going to break that down here for you guys. Hopefully give you a better understanding. So junk volume is volume that doesn't necessarily affect you positively or negatively. This is generally going to be generated through overkill volume on isolations. It's called junk volume because it's it's not harmful, it's just useless. So it's like, we all know when we buy something that was like made in China or made in a really cheap manufacturer that was like a scam, it's like, yeah, maybe it's not like harmful to you. It's just, it's just useless. Like we've all bought a crappy piece of gym equipment or something. That's like, it's not going to hurt you, but it's just not that good. Like this, this bench that I have my laptop on right now. And that's why I upgraded to this other rep bench that I'm sitting on now. It's not like going to hurt me, but it, it's useless and it sucks. So there's no need for it. So where was I? I always lose myself on these notes. I have too many here. Let's see. Okay. So there's a difference between useless and harmful volume that is very important to understand. So the next term that I want to get into is going to be called baggage volume. So baggage volume is a term that I use because there is some volume that only affects you negatively, and that's how it got its name. It looks appealing to program it in, but there are hidden downsides you won't see until you've experienced it. And I've been through this before with my own personal experience of trying to milk compound lifts way too much. That was baggage volume because it had negative side effects that I've talked about in previous videos. This is typically generated through compound lifts. The main side effect of this type of volume is that it accumulates fatigue quickly and creates potential injuries, especially long term. It's also a fast way to mental burnout as well, which I've also experienced. One core principle of my training philosophy is that we need to minimize unnecessary fatigue and avoiding baggage volume is the biggest way to help that. So 
Now we've gotten to the junk volume, we've covered baggage volume, we know the downsides of too much volume, whether it's just useless work or whether it's actually harming your training, especially long term, we do need to avoid that. There is such thing as too little volume though, so you do need to have enough volume to grow because it is one of the main drivers of hypertrophy. If you're doing too little, you just aren't getting enough work in for your body to need to respond and adapt. And that should be common sense to a lot of people, but there are some people that just say like, nope, just progressive overload is all that matters. Like just it doesn't, volume doesn't matter. Yes, it does. Don't listen to them. It doesn't matter how intensely or close to failure you train. If you're not doing enough sets, you will not grow. The solution is finding a happy medium between the two. You'll notice that some muscle groups may require more volume than others. And that's why volume and stuff like this can be tricky to understand because it's not a one size fits all to each person. It's not a one size fits all to each muscle group either. And especially like maybe some people are arm dominant and they don't even need to isolate their arms to grow. That's probably 2% of lifters, but then some people can do 10 sets weekly for their biceps in direct isolation work on top of compounds and they won't even grow because they require 18 sets of isolation work. So personal experience and experimenting in your training is crucial to actually understanding this stuff fully. I love that you're listening to this video, but you need to actually take this, take what I'm saying and apply it into your own training, do studies on yourself because we're all highly individual. So the best way to find out is for you to learn through your own experience. Lifting is highly individual, and even your own mindset and personality can change what methods are best suited for you. Shout out to Stan Strength on that personality point. That's a really good one talking about how, um, basically, if you're someone that doesn't like enjoy something, it doesn't matter if the science says it's optimal because you're not gonna execute it optimally. And the same goes for the other way around. So. To leave you guys off with something here, in general, and this doesn't apply to everybody, but that like kind of happy medium covering most of that bell curve is going to be about 8 to 20, maybe like 22 sets per week per muscle group for optimal results. It's your job to find what's best for you. And like the points I talked about here, some people might require 20, some people might require 8. It just you just have to figure it out. Like if you're someone that can crush 10 sets per muscle group per week and make awesome gains off of everything, then you're good. Like more isn't always better. I'm currently training, I think I have 13 sets per week on like two muscle groups and everything else is either nine or 10 sets per week. And I'm still growing at a pretty rapid rate right now. So it's definitely not more is better. You just have to find what's best for you. So that's what I'm gonna leave you guys with today. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, definitely leave a comment if you have questions on this stuff because I hope you do. I talked about a lot of different things today. And yeah, let's uh, let's promote junk volume and baggage volume as terms. Let's get those known and know the difference and know how they can negatively affect our training. Other than that, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.